chapter 18 is the actual race, the match race. It's called the match race. Zeus, Zeus is really interested in chapter 18. Yes, you want to read chapter 18, Zeus? You want to read it? You just want to get slobber on it? You want to just slobber? You guys want to slobber on the book? Yeah, you love the book? I love the book, too. I do love the book. You guys want to race? Come on. Come on. Get up. Get up. Ow, ow, ow. You're squashing me. Oh, goodness. Sit down. Sit down, Sue. All right. We do have some company today, guys. Um, Zeus is now on my lap. Okay. Okay. All right. Hang on. I got to read to the kids. I got to read to the kids. I got to read. I got to read. Isn't Zeus a pain? Come on, Hayes. Hayes. Aw. Hayes, he gave up. All right, we'll try reading with Zeus on the lap. The match race. The day of the big race. The eyes of the nation turned upon Chicago. All morning long, trains, buses, autos, and planes roared into the city, discharging thousands of passengers bound for the track. A carnival spirit swept over the city. Offices closed for the day, and everywhere one question was asked, who will win, Cyclone or Sun Raider? How you doing, Charlie, asked a motorcycle cop of a policeman who was directing traffic at one side of Chicago's busiest corners as he pulled up beside him. Never saw anything like it, Pat, came the answer. Where the devil they all coming from? Come here, Sue. Horns blew and the endless lines of cars stretched far down the avenue. I'm worn out myself. They're just about all parked solid here to pack the track. We'll never get them all inside. They're coming from all over the country to see this race. Boy, I'd like to be up there myself to see Cyclone lick them. The motorcycle cop kicked his motor over. So would I, yelled, he yelled above the roar, but it's going to be Sun Raider by three lengths. We'll see... Say, what do you think of this mystery horse? What do you think of the mystery horse, Sue? Zeus, what do you think? Hayes, what do you think? Hayes, you gave up, because Zeus... All right. Now stop. Stop. Nothing much. Everybody's beginning to wonder how he got in the race anyway. He won't figure in at all. That's inside stuff. See you later. Oops, time out. And we'll try again. Come on, Hayes. Very good puppy. All right, all gone, all gone. Now you sit down and listen. You sit down and listen. You sit down and listen, mister. Fine, be a brat. Okay, sorry guys. Hazy, you're a good listener. Hazy's a good listener. Okay, Zeus is still a baby. All right, sorry. So they think that Cyclone or Sun Raider will win, and there's no chance for this mystery horse. In a large apartment house not far from the track, Alex's mother and his Aunt Bess looked out the large living room window at the slow-moving track pit below them. In the distance, they could see the track already jammed with people. Bess, did you ever see such traffic in all your life, Miss Ramsey asked. What on earth is happening over there? Don't tell me you haven't heard about the big match race that's being run today. Everyone's been talking about it. Why, I even have tickets. I was going to surprise you. Uh-oh. Guess who hasn't been told about the race, guys? Think about it. But Bess, I've never seen a horse race in my life. I won't even know what it's about. Nothing to it, her sister laughed. The horse that gets around the track first wins. I don't go myself much, but this is something nobody should miss. For the first and only time, Sun Raider and Cyclone are going to meet. You've heard of them. It's probably the grandest... It would be the grandest horse race of all times. And if you think we're not going to see it when we only live a quarter mile away from the track, 
why she looked out the window. Look at the crowds. Come, Belle. Let's get our hats and coats and go get seats. Mrs. Ramsey shook her head and went for her coat and hat. If my husband or son ever find out about me seeing this race, I won't have a moment's peace when I get home. I'll have to take that horse of Alex right into the house. I told you, Bess, how they're both crazy over him. to keep everything under control. They'd certainly love to see this race. It's too bad they're not here. I'll pro they'll probably listen in on the radio. A plane dropped out of the endless, the cloudless sky. Swiftly it circled the field and came roaring down and rolled to a stop. The passengers hurried toward the door. It's just about time to make, we have just about time to make it if we hurry, one of them said. The stewardess called, bus is waiting directly ahead to take you to the track. The passenger sprinted for the car. Alec Alec's father darted into a seat behind the driver. Think we'll get there before they start, he asked. Yeah, I think so. They always take some time getting those temperamental babies on the track, the driver answered. Sun Raider always puts up a terrific fight beforehand anyways. The man slipped into a seat next to him. He's a lot wilder than Cyclone. Might as well do his fighting then, said a man behind him. He won't be anywhere near Cyclone once they're off. Oh yeah, it'll be Sun Raider by two lengths today. He turned to Mr. Ramsey. What do you think? Who do you think's gonna win? I'm picking the mystery horse. Say, you don't you don't you know that's just a publicity stunt? The man answered. I'll bet there won't even be a third horse out there today. We'll see, Alex's father said. We'll see. Alex sto stroked the black. It's almost time, fella, he said. The stallion paw pawed at the floor of his stall. Outside a line of policemen kept the eager spectators away. In the distance, Alec could see the stands jammed with people. Band music drifted toward them. Henry came back from looking over the track. Fast as the devil, he said. Better go over and weigh in, son, he said. He stopped and his eyes blinked a little as he put his hand on the green shirt. Alec wore. Fits pretty good, doesn't it, he smiled. Swell, Alec answered. So do the, pa so do the pants and the cap. He put the cap on and the long peak over his eyes to show Henry. Henry straightened the number three on Alec's arm. They'll bring you luck, he said. They did me. Alec weighed in and on his way back to the and was on his way back to the stables when he passed the two jockeys who were riding Cyclone and Sun Raider. They both looked much older than their pictures he had seen of them in the newspapers. One of them saw him. Say, you're the kid with the mystery horse, aren't you? Alec nodded. So you're actually gonna ride in this race? Sun Raider's jockey grinned. We thought you were just part of the publicity gag, didn't we, Dave? The other jockey pulled him by the arm. Come on, he said, quit wasting time. Then he looked at Alec. Better take it easy in this race, kid. They turned and walked away. Alec's anger mounted as he walked toward the stables. Who did those guys think they were anyway? Just because they were old hands at the game, they thought they owned the track? Henry and the Black were out of the stall when he got back. All set, kid, he asked. All set. The noise from the distance made the stallion nervous, and he chafed at the bit in his mouth. Alec rubbed his neck. Just a few things I want you to remember, Alec, Henry continued. There isn't much to tell you about handling the black. You know more about them than I do. You're a good rider, and I've taught you all the tricks I know. Now it's up to you to put them in use. Those other two jockeys are the slickest riders in the game. They won't let you get away with a thing, but they won't try anything that's outside the rules. They're smart, but not dirty. They're out to win, but so are you. Remember, you've got all the horse under you that they have. I'm sure of that, Henry, Alec interrupted as he looked proudly at the black. I can't tell you to hold him back, Henry continued, because you won't be able to. Stay on him and ride like you've never had before. If the black's the kind of horse we've been figuring him to be, he should win all the way. Cyclone was the first out of the barn for the big race. He received lusty cheers on his way to the, padlock, to the paddock. He was draped in a flaming red robe and wore red blinkers. His two forelegs were taped. A few minutes later, Sun Raider was led from the barn, almost wholly concealed in a white woolen blanket. All four legs were bandaged. He pranced nervously, and his small head turned viciously around. Another cheer went up from the crowd that gathered around the paddock when they saw him. 
Then a hush fell upon the crowd as the black appeared, covered in his new black robe and accompanied by old Napoleon. Alec held him by the lead, attached to his bridle. The stallion reared, and Alec let the rope slip through his fingers until he came down. The black's eyes blazed when he saw the other stallions. Alec remembered the fight the black had had with the chestnut stallion in Rio. He tightened his grip on the rope and walked him far behind the others when they reached the ring. The silence was broken by a man's loud yell. There's the mystery horse! Then everyone started talking. They hadn't expected to see anything like the black. He's bigger than Sun Raider! Alec heard one of the men exclaim. A few minutes later, one of the track officials called, Riders up! The blankets were whipped off the horses. Henry saddled the black and then boosted Alec into the saddle. Let the others go out first so there won't be any trouble, he said. As they went out slowly around the ring, the black's gaze was on the other horses far ahead of him. His nostrils quivered and he shook his head nervously. Alec knew that only Napoleon beside him kept him under control. A long line of policemen kept the crowd back and made the path from the paddock to the track. The bugle sounded. The black raised his head and his ears pricked forward. Henry led him toward the track. They stopped at the gate. Cyclone and Sun Raider were already walking past the grandstand on their way to the post. Henry looked up at Alec. Well, kid, you're on your own now, he said quietly. Go to it. Alec's heart pounded as he saw the solid mass of people stretch out before him. Okay, Henry, he said. Old Napoleon neighed plaintively as Henry kept him from following the black out onto the track. Every vantage point in and around the outer fences and the course was jammed with excited fans. Many perched on rooftops fully a mile from the starting point. Their attention was focused on Sun Raider and Cyclone as they passed the stands. Then suddenly they saw a giant black horse, his mane waving like a wind-blown flame, coming down the track. Spectators rose in their seats and excited hands raised glasses to their eyes. It's the mystery horse, shouted a well-known sports commentator to nationwide radio audience. One hand left the microphone and picked up the program. He's listed as the black and ridden by Alec Ramsey. He's raising quite a commotion around here. He's one of the biggest horses I've ever seen, if not the biggest. He's black, coal black. He's big and strong and doesn't seem to want to go near the other horses. Alec Ramsey is on his back, is having a difficult time controlling him. Lord, I've seen plenty of horses in my time, but none with action like that. I'd say that this horse is that that this horse that most of us have labeled Neville's Folly is going to be a much bigger picture in this race. Yes, sir, it's shaping up to be the greatest match race of all times, or I miss my guess. Now, he's approaching the starting line. Cyclone doesn't want to go near him and moves away. Sun Raider stands his ground and his teeth are bared. The starter's having quite a time. That black horse is a devil. He wants to fight. They're lining up. There he goes up into the air. He's plunging at Sun Raider, striking. Listen to that devil scream. Never in my life have I heard anything like it. It's risen to such a high pitch that it's practically a whistle. You can probably hear it. There, Alec Ram Ramsey's got him down. That boy can stick on a horse. What a struggle is going on out there, folks. Over 80,000 people here, and I can say without a fear of contradiction, they've never seen anything like this before. Take it from me, the black is a wild stallion, clearly never broken. A savage on the racetrack. You folks have seen Sun Raider. You know that they don't come much wilder than he. But he certainly met his match today, in fighting anyway. He's backing away from the black now. They've got Cyclone in between the two of them. That's better. Alec Ramsey's managing the black now. That boy's doing wonders. I wouldn't be in his shoes for all the money in the world. Sun Raider won't stand still. He's furious. He hates the black. He's broken out of line. There he goes, striking at the black. He's hit him. Oh, oh, the black's leg is bleeding. That was a pretty hard blow. Alec Ramsey can't hold his horse any longer. He's on his hind legs and plunging at Sun Raider. There's no way of stopping this thing. Sun Raider's backing up again. He doesn't stand a chance with that black devil. Oh, wait. There's Alec Ramsey pulling on the horse's head. He's turning him off. He's getting him under control again. He's got him on the outside. Sun Raider doesn't want to fight anymore. He's back in position at the pole. Looks as though the starter's going to send them off while he's got them there. 
The black's leg is bleeding pretty badly. Sun Raider doesn't seem to be much off for the fight. Alec Ramsey's leaning over, looking at the black's wound. He's getting off. He'll probably leave the race. Too bad. They're off. The starter wasn't watching Alec Ramsey. He was climbing out of his saddle. Sun Cyclone and Sun Raider are fighting head to head as they flash past the stand. The black is left at the post. He's out of the race. No, no. Here he comes after him. His jockey's only half in the saddle. Now he's on. He's trying desperately to pull the black to a stop, but he doesn't want to run with his leg in that condition. He's pulling furiously on the reins, but he doesn't seem to be doing any good. The black wants to run. He's fighting for his head. For his head. He's almost pulling Alec Ramsey straight up in the saddle. Now he's ripped the reins out of his hands. He's close to 100 yards behind, too far to catch up, but he's going to run. Cyclone has, bitten, has beaten Sun Raider to the first turn. They're both running under the whip. Each wants to set the pace. Cyclone's jockey is deliberately pulling his horse up so that Cyclone's churning hindquarters are right in Sun Raider's nose. That's a shrewd move as it gives his mount a breather after that stretch sprint and forces Sun Raider to check his speed from running on Cyclone's heels. But now, as they round the turn, Sun Raider, the California Comet, is moving up alongside Cyclone. As they enter the backstretch, they're running neck and neck. Suddenly, a deafening roar rose from the stands. Look, look, yelled the commentator hysterically. The black's coming up like a house fire. You've never seen a horse like run like this. He's all power, all beauty. The distance between him and the others is lessening. How it's lessening, I wouldn't believe it if I wasn't seeing it with my own eyes. The black is running, the others down. Cyclone and Sun Raider are fighting for the lead going into the last turn. The black's almost behind them. What action, what tremendous stride. The crowd is going crazy. Sun Raider is passing Cyclone on the turn going into the lead. Here they come down the home stretch. The crowd began to scream as the fighting horses came thundering toward them. Sun Raider was surging ahead. Cyclone was falling back. The black had him. Sun Raider was two lengths in front, his jockey batting away with his whip. The black started moving up. Now he was a length behind. No whip was being used on him. His jockey was like a small blur lost in the stallion's thick black mane. Hysteria swept the crowd as the horses passed them for the second time. The finish line only 100 yards away. He'll never get Sun Raider, yelled the radio announcer. The stallion flashed by the stands going faster with every magnificent stride. With a sudden spurt, he bore down on Sun Raider. For a moment, he hesitated as he came alongside. The crowd gasped as Black's ears went back and his teeth bared. There was movement on his back. His jockey's hand fell and rose on the stallion's rear quarters for the first time in the race. Into the lead, the black swept past the cheering thousands. A step, a length, two lengths ahead. And then the mighty giant plunged under the wire. The black rounded the first turn and had entered the back stretch again before Alec was able to slow him down. He knew that the only pain in the stallion's leg enabled him to do it. Finally, he brought him to a stop. Alec forgot the cheery thousands as he slid exhausted from the stallion's back. He bent down to look at the wound. There was so much blood. Alec took his handkerchief and wrapped it around the black's leg to try to stop the bleeding. You shouldn't have done it, boy, he said. A station wagon roared to the track toward them, leaving a cloud of dust in its wake. The black reared up as it pulled up to them. Henry jumped out and pulled the man behind him. Is he hurt much, he asked. Alec... He asked Alec anxiously. Here's the veterinary. Can't tell it's bleeding pretty bad, and I know it's hurting him. The veterinary, the veterinary bent down to examine the wound. Henry went to the wagon and returned carrying a pail of water, a sponge, and a bandage. The veterinary cut off Alec's handkerchief that was now covered in blood. The voices of the clamoring thousands stilled as they realized what was happening on the track. All eyes were on the small group. The veterinary straightened up. He's lost a lot of blood. But he has a leg like iron, he said. Give him a couple of months rest and he'll be good as new. Alec and Henry looked at each other and their eyes were moist. No word was spoken while the veterinary bandaged the black's leg. Then Henry broke the silence. Well, Alec, he said, guess you and the black did it. The veterinary stood up. Okay, he said, and now I think they're waiting for you over at the winter circle. As Henry boosted the boy into the saddle, an avalanche of cheers rose from the crowd. The stallion's ears pricked forward, and he looked wildly around. Alec patted him on the neck. 
for the first time, he realized the race was over and they had won. You did it, boy, he said proudly. You did it. The blood raced through his veins and his heart pounded against his ribs and the crowd cheered them on their way back. The stallion reared up as they approached the grandstand. Thousands of pairs of eyes watched the, watched the black as he pranced out beyond the crowd. He did not want to come closer, yet he did not want to fight. Sun, he did not want to fight sun. He did not want to fight his rider. Some of the crowd broke through the police line and rushed toward him. They stopped suddenly when he reared and moved back as he came toward them, his head and tail erect. His action was beautiful, springy, and every few steps he jumped with marvelous ease and swiftness. Experts shook their heads no, knowingly at the black's performance. Here, said what old man, is the greatest piece of horse flesh that ever set foot on any track. Alec rode the black to the judge's stand and into the winner's circle. The stallion stood for the first time. Alec and Henry could hardly believe their eyes. Even flashlight bulbs exploding close at hand only caused them to toss his head. They put a horseshoe of roses around his neck. Alec looked at the crowd below him. Suddenly he stopped. Could that be his father? Dad, he yelled, Dad. Henry, look, there's Dad over there. Henry pushed his way through the crowd and was halfway back. Excuse me. With Alec's father when a familiar voice made them turn. Looks as though we're all here, said Alec's mother. Belle, gasped Mr. Ramsey. She put a hand on her husband's arm. I've never had such an afternoon in all my life, she said. From the time I saw Alec come out on the black and couldn't do anything about it until the end. She paused and looked at Alec sitting proudly astride his horse. But now all I care about is that it's over and he's safe. We should all be mighty proud of him, Henry said as he led the way toward Alec. The governor of the state had given Alec the gold trophy emblematic of track supremacy when Alec saw both his dad and his mother with Henry. His mouth dropped open and he forgot to listen to the governor who was talking to him. He wasn't seeing things. They were both here. He waved. His throat was tight, too tight to say anything. The governor kept talking. The black shook his head and pawed the ground. Cameras clicked. Motion picture cameras ground away. Radio announcers dragged their mics after them as they simultaneously walked through the battle with their, through the crowd. Finally, the governor was through. The crowd cheered and Alex slid off the black. Henry unsaddled the stallion. Suddenly, a line of police officers pushed through the crowd. Following them came Jim Neville leading the podium. The stallion whinnied and threw his head high into the air. Old Napoleon answered and thrust his nose up the blacks. Nice going, kid, said Jim. I knew you two could do it, he nodded at Napoleon. He was almost going crazy back there, wanted to do a little congratulating himself. He belongs up here anyway, Alec laughed. The radio announcers pushed their way through and rushed up to Alec. He broke the world's record, one of them was saying. They were pushing the mics in front of him. They motioned for him to say something. Alec hesitated a moment. The black was every bit as good as he, they believed him to be, he said. We knew he had it in him, and he proved it today. The announcers then broke in and started giving the history of Alec and the Black. Alec caught Jim Neville's eye. He had told them. The owners of Sun Raider and Cyclone came up and congratulated Alec. I've never seen anything like him as long as I've been around the track, Mr. Bollins said. That goes for me, too, said Mr. Hurst. I don't suppose you consider selling him. No, sir, Alec answered proudly. You're going to hear a lot more about this fella. I'm afraid of that, laughed Cyclone's owner. Answering the pleas of the hundreds grouped around them, Alec took a few roses from the huge bowl of flowers draped around the black's neck and threw them into the throng. In a few seconds, the souvenir hunters had ripped them apart. The black half reared and old Napoleon moved closer to him. Alec smiled at Henry and his mother and his dad. He rubbed the black's nose and then led the huge stallion through the crowd back to his victory oats. That is the end.